the Justice Programs Unit. We are going to do what we can to try to stay as close to on time as possible today. Um, and I will uh, announce uh, a bit early at 20 minutes till 2 that at 2 o'clock I have to uh, go be on a conference call for the National Association. So I will be gone for a bit at 2 o'clock. So uh, Michael Daniels, Director of the Justice Programs Unit, and uh, Melissa Pearson, the Deputy Director of the Justice Programs Unit, the floor is yours. Thank you. Good afternoon, Commissioners. As you're aware, in July of 2017, this board made a policy-driven decision to split the existing Department of Homeland Security and Justice Programs into two offices, one for Homeland Security and Regional Communication under the direction of Director Kathy Crandall, and one for Justice Policy and Programs, uh, which I'm honored to direct as Justice Policy Coordinator. Uh, I'm Michael Daniels, and I'm here today to present to you the 2018 budget for that Office of Justice Policy and Programs. The fundamental responsibilities of our office are grant administration and monitoring of policy and program research and implementation to promote the commissioner's commitment to smart and thoughtful justice. We are the fiduciary agents and grant administrators for the county's major federal funding for law enforcement, prosecution, crime prevention, and education through the Burn Justice Assistance Grant, or JAG. For fiscal year 2017, we anticipate an award of $465,786 with an administrative allowance of 10%. That represents a 4.6% decrease from our JAG last year. We are the fiduciary agents and grant administrators for the county's Violence Against Women Act, or VAWA funds, intended to improve response and enhance services for victims of domestic and sex crimes by law enforcement, prosecution, victim services, and the courts. For fiscal year 2017, we anticipate an award of $576,044 with an administrative allowance of 3%. This represents a 2.6% increase from our VAWA funding last year. And we administer the Title II Juvenile Justice Funds that reduce delinquent behaviors in minority youth, reduce minority youth arrests, and or reduce disparity in the juvenile justice system. We're pleased to announce this year that through the advocacy of our office and especially the work of Deputy Director Pearson, we've convinced the Ohio Department of Youth Services, the granting agency, to include LGBTQ youth as eligible for these minority fundings for the first time in the state of Ohio in 2017. Our award is expected to be $110,000 with an administrative allowance of 9%, representing an 8.3% decrease from last year's funding. Shrinking grant award amounts and uncertain future in the nation's capital for much of the Department of Justice and related agencies' funding requires that we be even more selective on how we use these resources. To that end, our office will enact a new policy in 2018 informing current subgrantees to not automatically rely on continued funding of existing programming. We will be casting a wider net for subgrantee submissions to encourage new collaboration and ideas and we will require subgrantees to base their requests not on activity or number of individuals served, but rather on maximizing impact and outcome for those individuals in both the short and the long term. In pursuit of policy and program research and implementation that promotes your commitment to smart and thoughtful justice, the Office of Justice Policy and Programs is taking a nationally recognized lead in innovative and assertive ideas. <clears throat> We have taken this board's commitment to the National Stepping Up Initiative to heart and are implementing programs across the justice spectrum to reduce the number of individuals with mental health issues who become or remain justice involved. We concurrently apply those same ideas and principles to individuals battling addiction to alcohol or drugs, and we are especially cognizant of the high degree of overlap in these populations. Our focus on helping offenders to change rather than just locking them up has been recognized even most recently by the Columbus Dispatch, who called our philosophy, quote, the most rational response to crime that is driven overwhelmingly by a toxic brew of drugs, mental illness, and poverty. Our goals remain to reduce the average daily jail population by 30 percent by 2020, and to reduce the average length of stay disparity between inmates who have and do not have mental illness by 50 percent by 2020. You can track our progress online, and I'll give that website at the end of the presentation. We will focus on diverting individuals from arrest with increased emphasis and support for crisis intervention training for patrol officers across all metropolitan police departments in the county. 
we are launching wraparound case management teams around our most frequent users of jail, shelter, mental health, crisis centers, patrol runs, and EMS fire with a goal of diverting more than 50 of those frequent jail residents out of jail and into stabilized living within the community in the next two years. It's important to notice we are implementing this program without additional funding. We're doing it simply through an increased focus and commitment on the part of all of the community partners involved. With assistance from the Data Driven Justice Initiative of the National Association of Counties and the Laura and John Arnold Foundation, we will use the free open lattice platform to link privacy protected criminal justice and health data sets, which will allow us to look across records and share data such as 911 calls, arrests, jail bookings, behavioral health service files, et cetera, to find more effective and less costly intervention. We will he invest heavily in pretrial alternatives to incarceration, including increased support and advocacy for prosecutors' diversion in both municipal and common police courts, heavier reliance on pretrial probation screening, recommendations, and recognizance bonds, and alternatives to cash bail for those who are in poverty. We are especially excited about a new project supported by a $400,000 Bureau of Justice Assistance Comprehensive Opioid Abuse Site Grant Program <laughs> written by Deputy <laughs> Delect Director Melissa Pearson uh, awarded to Franklin County just weeks ago. The project has a working title of Diversion Alternative Project Opioid and will focus on the city of Whitehall providing resources for a mayor's drug court, dedicated case managers, supportive services, drug testing, harm reduction strategies, and education. The goal there is to reduce opioid misuse, overdose, and death by 20% over the span of the three-year grant. Inside the jails and courts, we're focused on evidence-based programming, such as our nationally recognized Pathways for Women's Healthy Living program, which is showing a reduction in recidivism for participants, as you mentioned, Commissioner Brown, from 100% folks who were coming and going and coming and going to a 14% recidivism rate and maintaining that lower rate over two years. The Justice and Mental Health Collaboration Grant that supports this project will expire in September of 2018, and we are keenly cognizant of the need to find extension or replacement funding for this critical and effective program. We are intimately involved with our friends at the Adam Board and at NAFCARE in implementing a medically assisted treatment protocol for opiate addicted inmates in the jail. As uh, Director Royer mentioned, using $400,000 of Cures Act funding annually to treat over 500 people. We are equally involved with the Municipal Court's mental health specialty docket in implementing innovative programming and use of long-acting injectable psychotic, antipsychotic medications using funds provided by the Ohio General Assembly. Our office works closely with the Franklin County Sheriff's Office deputies in charge of corrections and special projects, and we hope to be instrumental in formation of programming-friendly dorm housing at Correctional Center 2, including in 2018 an honor dorm for men and women, a veterans dorm for men, and a therapeutic community dorm for women. We additionally remain intimately involved in the planning for programming in the new correctional facility as it opens in both phase one and phase two. We also staff and execute the majority of programming for the Franklin County Reentry Coalition. In 2018, we are creating two faces to the coalition, a client-facing effort branded First Step Franklin County, which focuses on direct constituent connections, and a community-facing effort focusing on Commissioner Brown's challenge to the community to hire, rent to, or adopt at least one justice-involved individual. Uh, the challenge aims to sign up and employ 100 people, rent to 50 folks, and have 100 folks uh, receive wraparound and sort of adopted services by community and faith-based organizations just in 2018. With the split in our offices and increased demands on grant administration, both old and new, we are requesting in this year's budget a dedicated full-time fiscal position dedicated to the Office of Justice Programs and Policy and Programs. Our operation is lean and efficient. We send more than 90% of the grant funding we receive directly to subgrantees for direct services to our residents. We are very conscientious about charging the grants and not the general fund for every permissible expenditure. In 2018, we will administer or heavily influence more than $2.5 million in new grant funding <coughs> just from known awards at this time. However, commissioners, we do rely on a subsidy from the Commissioner's General Fund 
to cover a significant portion of our operating expenses, including staff salaries and benefits, and some few minor non-grant eligible expenditures. <clears throat> In 2018, the subsidy for the Office of Justice Policy and Programs is approximately $475,000, of which more than $285,000 is in direct support of grant administration and programming. In closing, I thank my staff, Melissa Pearson, Kisten Palmer, Patrice Palmer, Caitlin Condon Looney, and Hope Foster for the work that they do every single day, our incredible interns for their dedication, the Office of Management and Budget, especially Director Telerik and, uh, and Analyst Ashley Harris for their uh, guidance, clarity, and I might add infinite patience with the new director. Um, County Administrator Ken Wilson for your bold and unswerving leadership on these smart justice issues and commissioners to you for your vision and commitment to serve all of the residents that we interact with in our office. And we're happy to take any questions. So, oh, and there's the website where you can track how we're doing. So uh, thanks director for your presentation today. Um, so and maybe this is for the OMB director. So I'm, I'm, I'm sometimes I'm having a tough time connecting the agency's numbers with the book. And so where is where the subsidy he just mentioned, that he just outlined, like, so I'm looking on page four, and it has that the general fund subsidy is much larger than what he just said. Can because we have that? the combined departments, Commissioner. Not only is my Office of Justice Policy and Programs, but what you're looking at includes Director Crandall's Office of Homeland Security and Regional Communications uh, all rolled up into one line as one large gotcha. department. Got you, got you. Is that what you were going to say? That was exactly what I was going to say. <laughs> Not that you wanted to answer. <laughs> Sorry, Commissioner. <laughs> <laughs> Too many directors in the room. All right. I think the work that you're doing with the team and Melissa, the work that you're doing with the team has been pretty astounding in just the short time. And I know everybody up here would expect me to say that, but I have seen it. And I have seen the increases in service to those who most need it. So I say it because it's true that you have made an impact on the lives of so many more people. And thank you for that. Thank and you. And we need to keep the focus where we are right now and keep going. And, you know, it concerns me with with the budget, if we don't have the resources to match grants and things, we what would we do? Yeah, right, right, Deputy Commissioner. Administrator <laughs> Wilson. Uh, right, Commissioners. I mean, we talked about this uh, when we started this process, the hearings last week on the 28th. Um, these are uh, essential programs, and they represent um, needs, not wants, in our community. Uh, many of these programs um, are, are literally save lives, and one, uh, it would be uh, very disappointing if we had to take steps backwards um, in this area and move away from smart criminal justice policies in the name of just doing the bare statutory minimum, which is essentially locking people away for their designated amount of time and sending them back in the community after. So they could come back and back and back, which we know that happens because that's the way it goes. This is a, what we're doing here is, uh, it reflects common sense and it's prudent. Um, because at every turn, I'm directing the staff of the Justice Policy and Programs to look for, be aggressive and look for grant dollars. The, the Whitehall grant is an example of that uh, drive. Um, the, the use of the, the data 
uh, to be able to have access to that data. We're looking at um, scouring everywhere we can look to bring in grant dollars. Yes, it's going to require matching funds in a number of cases, but um, I feel like the things we're doing under stepping up, the things we are looking at integrating into the correctional facilities, uh, the community intervention and diversion uh, policies, they work, they make sense, they're consistent with the goals of this board. Um, I'm glad to see that we're tracking it and that you've got, you know, we're going to have the data because, you know, there's a, there's a lot of detractors out there. There's a lot of people sitting in the building across the street that don't think that we're going to be able to change the numbers. So uh, I'm glad that we're tracking it because I'm, when, when we have the data and we have the ability to show them that we're making an impact uh, and that we're changing the numbers, uh, that'll be great. I, I, I can't wait for that day. So good stuff. Thanks, guys. Thank you. Thank you. All right. We are next up to the county treasurer.